chapter 2 land soil water natural vegetation and wildlife in this chapter we'll be discussing about the different natural resources what we got naturally by the nature so land soil water these three plays a very vital role when it comes to the natural vegetation happening and also the growth of the wildlife first of all let us take details about land the entire land on the earth is divided into seven continents which is covering nearly 29 to 30 percent of the entire earth's area so in these seven continents i think you all know the names of the continents asia africa north america south america moving on to the east we have europe and to the australia down the line we have antarctica so all these seven continents together the entire landmass comprises to 30 percent or if you move to the exact statistics 29 percent of the entire area of the earth where we are staying right now so in this uh, seven continents also one of the continent is completely inhabited by the human beings that is the antarctica continent and moving on to some parts of europe are very less populated places some parts of asia and africa are densely populated places and moving on to north america upper part of north america also is very less populated and the other countries all are highly populated places why people started to live in only particular regions because for our survival we need water so the next natural resource what we have is water the water starts to flow from higher elevations to the lower elevations when the water is flowing from higher elevations to the lower elevations it starts to flow completely downwards and the low lying areas are completely susceptible for the flow of the water so we have the water covering the entire low lying areas so the areas which are plain areas which are river valley areas are very much comfortable for us to do cultivation that is we get the fertile soil available there so initially man started to settle at the river valley regions or the riverside regions where it provides water for the cultivation water for his daily needs so all the purposes are fulfilled so man started to live in the initial years at the river valley regions later he moved towards the plain lands and later to the hilly regions and today we find people living in all the elevated places also and also in the nearby to water regions nearby to the sea coast so everywhere on the land we have people living now so this signifies what is the importance of the land as i mentioned just now the cultivation we need good soil availability the soil availability makes us to feel comfortable when we are nearby to the water bodies because it has the water flow and also the underground water levels will be good and the fertility of the soil also will be maintained properly because of the soil conservation which happens through the flow of the river so all these things adds on to find us what is the use of having land or how do we use the land one purpose generally for what we use the land is to we stay on the land we can't stay in the air we can't stay in the water so we have to stay on the land itself so as we are staying on the land for all the human beings they stay on the land apart from this they also use the land for cultivation of the crops for construction of the houses for construction of various industries factories and everything so all these things have to be constructed on the land itself let us now find out what are the other uses of land now we will see how the land is used for us in different ways as i mentioned till now land is majorly used for agriculture when we are doing cultivation of the crops we do the cultivation on the crops by tilling the soil 
by taking the land as a basic criteria how many crops per year we have to put also will be studied basing on the land basing on the land if it is the land which is close to the river body the land which has a good supply of water the land where the underground water resources are very good the fertility of the soil is very good we can cultivate three crops in an year sometimes we can cultivate two crops only in an year so basing on the land we can try to know how the agriculture is there or how can we proceed in agriculture if the soil is not suitable for agriculture if it is a dry barren waste land we cannot do cultivation so this will be determined by the land next land is used to do forestry also forests grow on the land itself when we clear the forest we again try to develop the forest so we need to plant the plants and grow them mining mining is done by drilling the land we drill the land then we go into the deeper layers and we try to get the extracts outside so this also done by the land as i mentioned earlier building houses we build houses on the lands layers and roads the roads are laid on the land setting up of industries so every activity whatever the human being does is done on the land itself we cannot do anything leaving the land so land plays a very vital role in every individual's life every country's development and every nation's gdp also and moving on to find out how the land is divided the land is generally divided into private and community private the land which is owned by an individual is called private land the land which is owned by a community is called community land how can a land be owned by an individual yes for example if your father owns a house or a property or a piece of land a few hectares of land cultivatable land so that is called private property as your father is the owner of that particular piece of land this property belongs to himself that is why he is called a private property or private lands if the we have a public parks then we have the railway stations bus stands all these things come under community lands so on these lands we can grow the crop we can use for medicinal herbs we can develop the park region we can make it as a function hall we can use it for various purposes because it is not any individual's property it is the property of a, a group of people the society who is living there that's why it is called a community land land is divided into two parts private land which is owned by an individual community land which is owned by the society of that particular region or particular village or particular mandal district however it is so here there will not be a common owner here we have a individual owner who owns that property here we have various other people together coming or communities heading up other jilla parishad administration taking care of that one so no individual owner will be there for the community property or common properties